care about you at Chevy Land. At Chevy Land, the advantage is yours. The Chevy Land Advantage. Two years, no charge scheduled maintenance is included with every new vehicle. And for a limited time, take advantage of 0% APR financing for up to 48 months on select new Chevys. Plus, don't forget, every new vehicle we sell comes with a Chevy Land Advantage at no extra charge. Chevy Land cares about you. Hey, welcome back. We are excited for another episode of the Louisiana Sports Download. We have a special guest with us today, Jake Martin from the Washita Citizen, also co-host of Morning Drive with Aaron Dietrich and Jake Martin. You can hear them in the mornings on KMLB up in the Monroe area, 105.7, and also on YouTube. Go check them out on their YouTube page. They're live every morning. I've been on their uh, their show many times to talk uh, high school football with them, so always a good time. But uh, Jake, man, appreciate you uh, uh, joining us today. We're kind of kicking off this podcast again as as we get uh, ready uh, for a uh, another season of high school football. So we got Jake on here uh, to preview the uh, the Northeast Louisiana region. So Jake, man, again, appreciate your time and uh, happy to have you here. Yeah, man. Happy to be here. Uh, always enjoy having you on our show and it's here, you know, I mean, talking season's over, all the previews are done. The hay's in the barn, as Coach Faircloth used to say. <laughs> I, I, I'm ready. Let's go. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, let's let's dive right into it. You know, we um, it, it seems like in the past, um, you know, to start the season, a lot of teams kind of just want to get their feet under them. There may be some that are struggling to start the season. Uh, you know, not to say that they play inferior opponents, but they just want to kind of get, you know, a taste of what they're looking at for the season. Man, it seems like this 2022 football schedule, I mean, they are coming right out of the gate, not only in Northeast Louisiana, but all over the state, um, just yeah. with these, you know, really classic, I think it's going to be classic showdowns. Um, man, talk to us about a couple games that you're looking at in this week one. I mean, you've got Sterlington and West Monroe. You've got Warren Easton coming up to uh, to take on Ruston, which I think that's going to be a, a pretty good game up there uh, in that region. Man, just talk about some of those games and uh, what you're looking forward to this week. There's so many. I, I think that's what stands out when you start to look at the schedule. Um, we do our top 10 games on Tuesdays for the morning drive. And man, this might be the best week of the season. I mean, if you go down and look at it, and it's crazy to say because it's week one, and I'm sure there'll become a, a week that tops it. But like, for instance, we had Oak Grove taking on Opelousas Catholic. Yeah. It was like our ninth game or something like that. Like it, Jones, Jonesboro Hodge versus General Trask. Like that was that didn't make our top five. So j just to kind of tell you that, you know, West Monroe Sterlington, Easton and Ruston, uh, Washtenaw Rummel, uh, Homer and Union, which is just like, we saw both of those teams play in the dome and they're playing each other. And that was our number three game of the week. So I think that tells you just how stacked of a slate we have this weekend. We're fired up for it. Yeah, no doubt. And, uh, you know, even over in the Shreveport area, I know this has really not been hyped up just because of, the way that the team has struggled the last couple of years, but Neville at Evangel, I mean, you talk about 10, 15 years ago, that is a marquee matchup, which I think it, it's even going to be a good matchup this year. Uh, I, I think yeah. Evangel's got some some talent coming back. Uh, they got a, a good uh, quarterback, wide receiver, brother combo, the, the sons of uh, Josh Booty. So, uh, man, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I don't think that's going to be an easy task for Tannehill and company to go in to, uh, to, to Rodney yeah. Duran Stadium Friday. And, uh, and like you said, it, it, it's not just the uh, uh, upper classifications, it's the smaller classifications that, man, they're, they're really going to get after this weekend. I'm, I'm interested to see how Homer and Union Parish, how that game turns out. Homer yeah. comes back with a lot of talent. And, of course, Union Parish has Trey Holly, and that's all you need to say about that. But not only him, but they have a load of talent as well. Um, you know, it, I – I had such a hard time trying to figure out if I wanted to make West Monroe Sterlington or Ruston Warren Easton my game of the week for that area uh, on gopreps.com. Finally ended up going with Ruston and, and Warren Easton only because, uh, you know, Warren Easton was a few yards shy of a touch of a state championship last year. Um, and then Ruston had a, a 10 and three season and 
a really good season last year. They return a lot of firepower. Um, talk about those two games in, in general. Yeah. You know, which game do you think in your mind is going to be, you know, if you had to tell somebody on the street, hey, come watch the best football in Northeast Louisiana, I want you to go to, where would it be and why? So good question. I, I think to answer that question, I would send them to Ruston and Easton because yeah, yeah. Easton is a team that, you know, you, you look at the polls, the LSWA polls, you know, Westgate had 112 points, Easton had 111. So they were separated <laughs> by that much and, and it could have gone either way. Um, I, I think you have that side of it. Then you have Rustin who just pummeled West Monona Jamboree and it's a Jamboree. And it's like, how much do you take from a Jamboree? We've had a lot of those discussions this week already, yeah. but still, I think it was, it was important for Rustin and the maturity of their football team to have some success against West Monroe, which is something they haven't had in, in quite a few decades. Right. Um, so I would, I would answer it with that. But if you ask me, which game should I go to just straight up, I would send you to West Monroe because I think it has the most compelling storylines of any game we have. And, and honestly, it could be the most compelling this season. You, you got Sterlington coming off of that. Another Jamboree win, but they beat Neville, right? Yeah. 10 to six. And then you have West Monroe who just took a thumping. And look, I've been talking about it a lot this summer. West Monroe's young, West Monroe's green. They're going to have some growing pains. And you saw it, and it was ugly. They had four turnovers against Rustin. And right. so now you put the pressure on West Monroe where you've got to clean that up. And I thought that was such a compelling offseason storyline just because we looked at the schedule and we saw Sterlington. And even though they got to replace a lot of guys on that back seven from that state championship team, they still returned their leading passer, their leading rusher, which, by the way, you know, we're still waiting to see if Tramel Calvin will be cleared for this game. I think he will. We're still waiting here. Uh, and, and then your leading receiver in John Barr. And yeah. this, the Sterlington team is different than past Sterlington teams, too, because they got three D1 guys. And that's usually not something we talk about with Sterlington. It's usually the, the team that just has the most grit, right? They might not have the, the talent that Madison Prep has, but somehow, some way, they fight, they scratch, they claw, they win those ball games. And so this year, they have those dudes. This year, they pass the eye test. And so I, I just – I think it's going to be a crazy atmosphere, and I think it's going to be a lot of people who are going to that game going – is this truly a changing of the guard? What Stillington has nothing to lose here. They're not supposed to That's beat right. West Monroe, but they're good enough to beat West Monroe. And, and West Monroe has so many questions right now that I think it's just, I mean, if you're writing a, a television script, this is it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote in my column this week, I made a comparison to uh, Avengers Endgame where Captain America is on the ground with his broken shield and he's trying to get up and here comes Thanos' army, right? And here comes Sterlington. I mean, you got you to gotta strap it up and get ready and, and try to hold it off because, you know, Sterlington's not going to take it easy on you. So I think it's going to be That's a true. crazy atmosphere That's just true. because of all those just compelling storylines. Yeah, no doubt. And and we talked about this when I came on y'all's show uh, the week of the Jamboree or right after the scrimmage. Um, you know, scrimmages and Jamborees, a lot of people get so uh, emotional um, about scores and scrimmages and jamborees. And look, I always tell somebody, you know, a, a coach, yes, he wants to do good. He wants to win in every game. He's not going to throw everything at you for a jamboree or scrimmage, especially if he has to play you again in the, right. in the regular season. Um, yeah. so, you know, when, when people were, were talking about that rest in West Monroe game, although I know I'm not taking anything away from rust and I'm not taking anything away from West Monroe. Uh, I just think by week 10, they're both going to have the kinks worked out. I think that's going to be a hell of a game to watch, um, oh, yeah. to, to, to end the season. But, um, you know, going into that Sterlington game, uh, Again, Sterlington has nothing to lose. They come in the underdogs uh, just by, you know, classification alone. Uh, you know, is there a ton of pressure on West Monroe to win this game? And if they don't, what do you foresee happening? Um, you know, does that set the tone for their season? Do they look at it as a learning curve? Hey, we're young. Uh, we got to start getting ready for these a lot tougher teams coming in. Uh, you know, what's your take on that? And, you know, 
you've talked to to Coach Doty over at Starlington. What's his mindset going into this game this week? I mean, this is this could be a huge victory for his program, maybe even a little bigger than a state championship win last year. I know that's pretty special, but beating West Monroe yeah. sets yeah, the it, tone. It, it does. Um, I, I think – I mean, obviously, it'd be huge for Sterlington. I think it would be a bigger story for West Monroe. Yeah, Sterlington is great, and they are likely to win another championship. I They're don't that, disagree. I mean, they are really that good this year. Um, but when you're talking about West Monroe, when you're five A, and not just five A, but you're one of the bigger five A teams, you know, people have been hitting me up saying, "What do you mean rebuild? This is West Monroe. They're not supposed to rebuild. You have that many <laughs> kids." I don't care. You don't rebuild. Right. So even though Sterlington is really good, I think everybody in our parish, in our area, Northeast Louisiana, they understand how good Sterlington is. And they, and I think they acknowledge that. But as soon as this game was announced, a lot of people were saying uh, 20 point spread. And I was telling them, no, it's, it's, it's going to be much more competitive than that because that's right. West Monroe's young and Stonington's very good. Now we have the questions about the fourth quarter. West Monroe is going to have that depth advantage. Can Sterlington, but when they're exchanging punches in the first and second quarter, Sterlington might get the better of those exchanges. I'm just telling you, um, especially after what we saw last last weekend where West Monroe really struggled with a lot of like just fundamental things like the mesh point. They fumbled the mesh quite a bit, I think at least two times in that game. They had four to uh, total turnovers against Russ and Russ has a, an excellent front. And that's the other point is that Sterlington has a really good front too. I, I feel like I'm talking in circles, but West Monroe, the, the pressure is on them. It's going to be absolute chaos if they lose this game because there's already a little bit of panic after the way they looked in the Jamboree. And again, you try to say, hey, it's a Jamboree. Let's, let's calm down. They can, you know, go out and right. get it done against Sterlington and all of a sudden you feel good again. Um, but I think the narrative going in was if West Monroe doesn't win by 10 points, then it's, it's just like a loss. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the narrative anymore. I think after the way both teams looked last weekend, I think the narrative is, okay, West Monroe, you need to survive and win this game. And then you'll just be happy with the win and you can kind of move on from there. But right now, West Monroe is a little vulnerable just with the lack of experience. And Jerry always said as much all summer. He tried to say, we're, gonna, we're green. We're, the only way to get experience is to play. And we have to play these games. And it, it you know, you start out against a, a team like Sterlington, Bobby Breen is calling the plays. Bobby Breen was a state championship quarterback for West Monroe, and so it's his return to West Monroe too. So that that's another that's pretty cool tidbit. Yeah, no doubt. And just to uh, you know, Jake mentioned the uh, the LSWA polls. Just to put things in perspective. Those initial uh, preseason polls came out uh, this morning. You know, uh, uh, Rustin comes in at number five. Uh, West Monroe is in at number ten. Um, then you've got, uh, you know, a couple of their district opponents. Alexandria was receiving votes, um, as well as uh, Washita Parish, which we're going to get to Washita Parish in a second. Um, and then uh, in Class 3A, Sterlington was actually ranked number one uh, amongst yeah. all Class 3A schools. Um, hey, let me ask you something, Hunter. Yeah, go if ahead. If Sterlington doesn't do that to Neville, are they voted number one? If Rustin didn't do that to West Monroe, would they be number five? That was my question, and that's what I was going to ask you because when I did my Go Preps poll, uh, you know, no, no disrespect, but I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I had ranked Russ in that. I would be honest with you, but anyways, uh, I was kind of shocked when they were at number five. I, I was like, whoa, they caught the attention of a lot of voters. Um, yep. So, but you know, in my poll, I put University above Sterlington only because. You know, university is just – they're constant. They're just constantly good. They're they are just reloading every year. I think they'll be a, a little young this year. Um, but, again, they're one of those teams you can't count out in November. But, uh, you know, I, I definitely think Sterlington's win over, over Neville – win over Neville. Um, I, I think that had a lot to do with it. Um, you know, Neville's ranked number three in Class 4A, um, you know, and they're right behind Westgate and Warren Easton. So they still have a, a respect, some a lot of respect from, you know, the voters uh, in that poll. But, you know, definitely a lot of pressure on Starlington as well because you got Union Parish uh, right on their coattails uh, at number three in that poll. Um, those two are definitely going to battle it out for, for district supremacy, and that's – that's going to be an interesting district to watch this year too, just because of the the new components in that. You know, you've got Northwestern from over there in Northwest Louisiana. They're always competitive, and 
Um, you know, I don't know what your take is on, on Walsman, but I've been very impressed um, by Terrence Cahey and, and what he's yeah. been able to bring to that program. Um, and Carol's they've got a lot of good athletes. So, yeah, Carol's um, really talented too. So it, it's going to be a fun district. Yeah. But anyways, go, getting back to your question, you know, I think Sterlington did catch a lot of uh, attention, as so did Ruston. So it's it's going to be interesting to uh, it's going to be interesting to see um, how that plays out this week um, when the, when those when those teams collide uh, up there in Northeast Louisiana. But you know, Jake, just Northeast Louisiana football in general. Um, you know, for years it was you know West Monroe and Neville team here, team there. Dude, you've got Ruston, you've got West Monroe, you've got Neville, you've got Sterlington Union Parish, you've got Oak Grove, uh, Washita Christian, St. Frederick. I feel like any of those teams in, uh, uh, you know, whether it's select or non-select playoffs, I feel like any of those teams have a chance to make a deep run, if not win, and some repeat this year. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think you could throw Homer in the mix too. Obviously, Homer, they were voted yep. number one. You know, considered we 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 we, we claim them. We claim Homer. Uh, I know you're a Hainesville guy, uh, but we claim Hainesville too. Hainesville's hey, gonna be gonna be any, all right this year too. Anybody that claims Claiborne Parish, I'm good with. So they're kind of right in the middle of the state, right That's there. Right. <laughs> um, no, but you you are right. I mean, we we we've got a lot of really good football up here. I think OCS especially with the way Landon Graves was tossing the football around in the Bayou Jam against Gina. Yeah. He looked really good. Uh, he's 15-1 and one as a starter. Um, St. Frederick is going to have speed like it hasn't had before. And Micah Bell's a transfer. He actually transferred from West Monroe. He can push the ball down the field. And they've got William Patrick, who has a D1 offer with, with ULM, and he's a multi-sport athlete. He's good at everything he does. He really is a terrific athlete, and he can high point the football. And so – that gives them another dimension because they have Michael Thompson, who's an all-state uh, voted on by the coaches, mm -hmm. but he's still an all-state uh, running back in 1A. And so, man, they they look, I, I'm high on St. Frederick. They, they're going to have the young defense, but Billy Bell will figure that out. Um, OCS could, could win the championship. Uh, Sterlington, I, 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 I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'd almost be surprised if they don't. I mean, I just think they're that good this year. Um and you can go down the line. I mean, look, Mangum's going to challenge in 2A. Oak Grove's going to yeah. challenge in 2A. You know, I mean, it's just – it's really fun. It's really fun to talk about these teams because we've got a lot of really good teams in our own backyard. You know, we won't dive too deep into it just because there's there's no, per se, final select, non-select. Um, but, you know, as of the June meeting, uh, Oak Grove was, you know, kind of categorized in that select um, Division two, which would be – you know, your St. Charles, your Newman, your, your, your Notre Dames. Um, if that holds up, if they don't happen to win their appeals process, um, you know, I, I think they would have a fair shot at competing against those teams. I feel like Oak Grove, whether they're in 1A, 2A, uh, slate, non-slate, they're just one of those teams where Ryan Gregory has them – prepared year in year out they always have a tough schedule like you said they play Opelousas Catholic they even play Haynesville this year uh in, in a non-district contest which that's going to be I think a good game uh mm -hmm. for the middle of the season but you know just talk about you know those smaller schools that may be lumped in that weren't necessarily non I mean uh, a private school but may be in that category now uh I think you know some of them would have a fair shot yeah, I, I think Oak Grove, you know, they, they are changing offenses. They're going to a spread, which is kind of oh. shock. It's like a culture shock for Man. Oak Grove. Man. Yeah, uh, you should have seen it against Oak Washita. I was like, I've never seen an Oak Grove <laughs> this much in, in my life. But Jackson Bradley's their quarterback, really good athlete. Um, he he kind of is, is really the, 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 the component of that, the real reason why they did that. Um, and, and look, that might have some growing pains early on, but when you're talking about Oak Grove, you're talking about physical at the point of attack. You're talking about a kid in Camp Franklin who I thought was the most impressive kid I saw in the Bayou Jam. If you don't know the name Camp Franklin, he is an Oklahoma State commit. He's a he's an athlete, versatile athlete on that defense. Uh, he, he'll, he'll get touches all over the football field, but defensively, he was giving Washington nightmares coming off the edge. 
one of the best open field tackles I've seen in, in a few years. I mean, he's terrific. And I feel and, like Washtal's not going to be a slouch this year. It, no, they're not. And, and so watching what he did against Washtal, and we already knew he was good, but watching what he did against Washtal, mm -hmm. I think I was more impressed with him than any other kid I saw this weekend. Like, he is special. Uh, he should he should make the All-State team this year. But, yeah, Oak Grove's going to be able to contend. Um, no matter what side they're on. You know, no I, I feel like – yeah, I just I'm a little hesitant. Just like I want to see how this process goes with them changing the offense. Um, I think it'll be OK, but I, growing pain seems to be the theme for me. Uh, you could see some growing pains, but look, it's going to be nice to see them against Opelousas Catholic, a team that was, you know, number three in the select poll last year. They were number three in the, in the brackets for St. Frederick upset uh, Opelousas Catholic. So that's right. That's right. Really nice test uh, to kind of start off the season. And they're going down there. Is mm -hmm. that right? They're going that's down right. there to open the season. So that's a pretty fun road trip to uh, to go down there. But, uh, but yeah, you know, <clears throat> Oak Grove, even if they do stay on the non-select side, you know, man, I would love to see a matchup against a Manny or a, a North Caddo or, you know, a Mangum or a, a Voiles or, or, you know, yeah. teams like that. Uh, I think that would be just interesting. I've been telling every interview I've been on so far, I've been telling them, this is the year, you know, knock on wood for what the last two years, it's either been COVID or hurricanes that just kind of thrown a monkey wrench into everything. Um, you know, I think this is finally going to be a normal start to the football season, but with the reclassification with the, you know, new select definition voted on by the LHSA executive committee, I just feel like 2022 offers so many potential storylines and upsets and possibly even new champions, maybe some you've never even seen win a state championship before. Yeah. Um, I think sky's the limit, Jake, going into the 2022 season. And, uh, you know, I, I told my wife the other night, I said, I'm already ready for December to be here because I want to see who's going to be in the Dome. Let's not rush it. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's not rush the season. Let, let us enjoy it. Now, I'm with you. Uh, I think it's it, like storyline wise, it's it's so many awesome storylines. Um, yeah. And and uh, and you know, the, the, it is weird that we won't get like the final say so until the season started, as far as select and non-select. Yeah. I, I'll just say, you know, I, I don't understand it, but whatever. Um, but I am glad that. Um, you know, we will get something pretty soon. Like I, I'm anxious to see where everybody kind of settles at. And, and like, look, if you look at the way this is all panned out, I, I keep thinking about Neville because mm -hmm. ordinary years, like if this was last year, I would tell you straight up, Neville's not going to win the championship this year. They, they lost too much. Uh, I mean, everybody knows they lost Will Campbell. He's going to start for LSU this right. year. But That's they right. lost one more than just him. They lost A.J. Allen, who you just saw play for Nebraska. I guess Northwestern. That's right. Uh, my my offensive player of the year. He was unbelievable last year. Um, he had back to back weeks where he tore up St. Thomas Moore and then tore up West Monroe, and people were like, "Whoa!" But regardless, um, you look at the One defense. Of the leading like rushers in the state too. And, and, and Nietzsche's, uh sledge is gone. He signed with Auburn. Uh, Hinton Roberts was a former player of the year for me on defense. He was like their captain on defense. Uh, My Myron Elam was their uh, sorry, Morian Elam. He was their district MVP last year on defense. Uh, Lorenzo DeBose signed with ULL. I could keep going. That class was special. But they have a shot this year because if you look at 4A and how it's defined, That's you're right. like, oh, if it stays that way, it's like the last three teams that put Neville out aren't there. That's anymore. right. And so we know Neville's going to get better as the season goes along. They're, they're young to start out, out with. Brooks Anzalon, I think, is going to be a pretty good quarterback. And he's got some really good, nice weapons around him. And so as they get better, as the season goes along, I could definitely see them making a run if it stays how it is. Um, but, yeah, normal years, you, you just don't lose that that many great players and and automatically, you know, go right back to the semifinals. And potentially right. The That's right. I think they can do it this year uh, just because of how the brackets played out. Yeah, just looking over here at the, the top ten, uh, you know, if things stay the way they are now, you've got Westgate, you've got Neville. Westgate was state championship last year in the, on the non-select side. you got Neville. Northwood Shreveport's one of those. I don't know what their status is. They claim yeah. they're non-select, but then I've seen where they will be on the select side, so I don't know. They're, they're supposed to appeal. 
Uh, Lutcher is moving up to Class 4A. They're usually pretty pretty strong. Uh, you've got Huntington uh, with Cameron Evans over there uh, in northwest Louisiana. They're always in the mix. And then you've got Leesville. You've got Bell Chase. Uh, I'll tell you what, North DeSoto I think is going to be one of those teams where I think they'll surprise a few people this year. Man, kind of like what you said, 4A, <laughs> that non-select side is going to be wide open um, wide as, as far as competition. And, you know, that's what I'm saying. If Westgate, who I think – may have a chance to repeat this year. They did lose a, a couple of, uh, of key guys. Danny Lewis, one of them. Um, man, I don't know. Neville may have a chance. They may have a chance to get there and, and, uh, and surprise a few people, even with a young team. That's, and that's why I wanted to go back and, and talk about, you know, just storylines and, and things that may shock people that they're not used to because it's been so long since we've had a reclassification it's been so long since we kind of had a change in the playoff atmosphere. Um, and, you know, even the LHSA has talked about either reducing the, the playoff fields or, uh, or the classes. They, they're supposed to discuss that next week at their meeting. I don't know if that's still on the agenda. Uh, even if they, you know, reduce the size of the, the fields to 16 or 24 teams, that plays a big part in it as well. So, uh, yeah, definitely – Definitely anxious to to see how all that plays out. And uh, again, we won't know, you know, who will be select or non select until after the executive committee next week. So uh, <laughs> again, just a, a crazy start to the season. So, uh, but anyways, um, man, Jake, you know, is there if you had to go ahead and pick a preseason player of the year up there in Northeast Louisiana, plenty. Well, that's that's easy. That, that's let easy. me know. Let me know who it is. Trey Holly. <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah. Trey Holly, man. You know he's um, what eight hundred and something yards shy of breaking the all-time state record. Um, you know, just phenomenal athlete. LSU signee. Good kid. I've talked to him a couple times. I mean, yeah. just very respectful. Um, you know, just. Um, you know what I love? A little humble. You know, and it's funny, yeah. a kid like that. LSU signee, close to breaking the state record. And, man, he's just so laid back and, and humble. Um, I don't know, just a different breed. And I, I like kids like that who, you know, they go in, they get the job done. They're not flashy. They don't talk trash. Um, just just a good kid. I think he's going to be a good representative for LSU. Yeah, so he puts in the work. I think that's the first thing I would say is just that he puts in the work. But – I was going to say the thing that I love about Trey Holly is last year, two years ago, a lot of folks who just heard about Trey Holly, they saw him in the state championship game and union gets absolutely crushed. Yeah. Absolutely crushed. And so there, uh, you know, you can hear some people in the press. Like, oh, this is Trey Holly. Like what, what, this is him. Then you see union versus Sterlington last year. <laughs> a lot of the same people got to see him again. And then they went, that's Trey Holly. Yeah. So last year in the state championship game, it was it was unreal because Sterlington, you know, they'd already beaten Union. They were 14 and 0. Yeah. And every time you thought Sterlington was gonna, you know, kind of pull away in the game, Trey Holly would make a just sensational play, offense and defense. Uh, he had that like 60 yard touchdown where he spun off of two defenders and just took it to the yeah. house. We're like, whoa. Then he had a, a big touchdown reception. He even threw the ball in the game. He had seven tackles on defense. I mean, watching him play defense, he looked like Tackett Curtis running around out there. I mean, he was he was like a torpedo going to the football. So I'm just saying, man, he, he is special. I'm glad everybody got to see that in the state championship game. I think a lot of people were anticipating, you know, seeing him break this record. And it'll be pretty cool. You know, knock on wood, he stays healthy. As long as he stays healthy, he will break it. You know, he averages well over 200 yards per game. So it could happen midseason. Uh, I think a fun storyline, it won't happen. I think he'll break it before then, but a fun storyline would be if he's on the verge of breaking the record and they play Sterlington, like something like that would be awesome. But uh, I think he'll break it before they play Sterlington. Is that they play Sterlington at home this year? Like, like week eight, uh, I think. And I, I, I believe, I believe it's at union. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he he mentioned on a, a a video tweet that I saw last week that he wanted wrong. to he wanted to do it at home that he wanted to break the record at home in front of his of his home crowd, which would be special for him. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was telling somebody the other day, 
he's one of those guys, you know, they're – Jake, there's so much talent in the state right now, especially at the quarterback position. There are just it's just an influx of of D one type talent. But I would love to see somebody like a Trey Holly get the Mister Football Award if he's able to break the record and not even break the record, but smash the record and and, and make it his own. Uh, I think he would have a strong claim to that Mister Football Award um, uh, uh, chosen by the the state writers. Um, you know, that's just the kind of that's just the kind of kid he is and the kind of player he is. Um, I believe he belongs up there with, with some of the elite guys who have who have come and, and gone and won that award. So uh definitely, you know, Trey Holly, you know, good luck to him this season and uh you know the the, the that Union Parish Homer game, that's gonna be uh it's gonna be interesting to watch because you know yeah. Homer has Homer has a good uh, uh, running back and uh, and Elijah Curry and uh, you know they they lost a couple of guys on on offense but I think their defense is supposed to be pretty uh, pretty tight this year pretty pretty uh, special so um, yeah two teams that were that played in the state championship game last year so uh, I want to give one more shout out real quick just be- before we go. Yeah. Bingham has a running back, Jalen Williams. If you Jaylen haven't Williams. heard about Jalen Williams, he's special, man. Uh, he- he's so elusive. He's so slippery. If he can stay healthy, he'll go over 2,000 yards this year. He had 1,500 last year, got hurt. Uh, but, you know, he still totaled over 2,000 yards because he had 500 yards receiving. But there was a play against St. Fred in the Jamboree where – he caught a screen and he and it was raining at, at the Joe at Louisiana Tech. It was raining and so he caught a screen and he slid on the turf, maintained his balance, shook <laughs> a guy and took it across field for the score. And it's plays like that where you're just like, you can't teach that. Like you just no, can't no. do that. And it, I talked to Andy Robinson, St. Fred's coach, after the game, and he said, "Yeah, I mean, our best plan of action was don't kick it to him. He also had a kick return. He was like." We, we didn't want to kick it to him, and they, they did kick it to him. And <laughs> it. But he's special, man. If he stays healthy, he's going to be a name you hear quite a bit. Uh, Jalen Williams from Mangum. And Mangum's always one of those schools that they just seem to fly under the radar the entire year. But if you all, if you go back and look at past you know playoff brackets, more than likely they're either in the quarterfinals or semifinals every year, um, you know, why do they fly under the radar so much? That's just, you know, Mangum's a program that is, uh, you know, they have a lot of tradition. Um, you know, they're, they're still seeking a state championship, their first one in their program. But, uh, man, you know, like I said, going into this season, hell, who knows who's going to win a state title with, with how everything's arranged right now. But Mangum, I think, would be one of those to watch as well. I think that it's because they're blue collar. And I also think it's because they, they need to get over that hump, right? Yeah, yeah. I, and plus, you're like right on the outs, outskirts of Monroe. So a lot of these Monroe schools, they get the big pub. They remind me a lot of Hainesville. They really do. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's kind of like that. But if you go see Mangum, I mean, they they look the part. They get great support. Great size, yep. Well, Mangum's good. Like, it's, it's an awesome atmosphere to watch a football game. And so, yeah, they're just trying to break through that glass ceiling. And I think once they do, they'll start to get more of that respect. But they're going to be very good this year. Don't don't sleep on that. Yeah, no, definitely not. Especially if uh, <clears throat> you know they go up against a Manny or a Oak Grove or a Vols. Uh, Vols is going to be one of those teams too to watch. They got three one thousand yard rushers uh, coming back this year, which means that tells you they don't really throw the football a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> Carlos Bazert. Look that name up, people. Carlos Bazart, that dude is a beast. Go look at his huddle film. He is ridiculous. Anyways, Jake, man, I appreciate your time. Uh, we're going to have to do this again soon, maybe during the season once everything gets gets kicked yeah. off. And, uh, man, again, a lot of storylines, a lot of things, uh, a lot of players, a lot of teams to watch. So I really appreciate your time. And, uh, man, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll catch up soon. Thanks for having me, man. All right, man.